This video is inspired by 3 Blue 1 Brown's video titled Simulating an Epidemic. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out because it shows you how computer simulations can be used to model disease spread in the real world. As soon as I saw the video, I knew that I wanted to recreate something very similar to it in Scratch. And my finished product looks like this. So let's get to it. The way that I'm thinking about it right now, I want to start off with two sprites. So one healthy sprite and one sprite that is going to represent patient zero or the first sick one on the stage. So for my healthy sprite, I want to be able to show that it's healthy or sick. So I'm going to have two costumes on that first sprite. What I can then do is I can create multiple clones of that healthy sprite, as many as I want, at the start of the project. So let's start by drawing the healthy and sick costumes for the sprites. So I'm actually going to create a brand new sprite to do this. I'm going to go to the paint editor in the sprite editor. And I could use red to represent sick and green to represent healthy, but I'm going to actually change the colors in case someone is colorblind. So I'm going to use blue and yellow instead. So let's use blue to represent someone that's healthy. And we'll use yellow to represent the sick person. So I just changed the color to blue and then I'm going to use the paint button or the paint brush. Then we're just, I'm just going to draw a circle. And I'm going to rename this costume uh, healthy. So blue is going to represent healthy. And then what I could do is I can duplicate this and this one's going to represent sick. So now I just have to change the color that uh, we're using here. So let's uh, select yellow. I think that dark yellow looks pretty good. And then I could just select that dot. And now this one represents sick. And as you can see, we have our yellow dot representing a sick character. Healthy is blue. Okay, so let's rename this sprite to person. And we're going to create multiple people at the start of our project. But before we do that, let's make sure that we delete our first sprite, the cat, because the cat is, nowhere, is going to be nowhere in this project. And let's create another sprite. Um, actually, what I could do is I could duplicate this. And this, one's, this sprite is going to represent my patient zero. So I'm going to rename this second sprite that I just duplicated from the first. I'm going to rename him patient zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the healthy costume from patient zero. So patient zero can only be sick. So right now we have two sprites. We have our healthy person and we have our sick person. And the healthy person has two costumes. So when I select person, it has two costumes because a healthy person can get sick. And we're going to switch the costumes when that happens. Okay, so what do I want to do next? Let's, um, let's actually create clones of the healthy person. So let's say that at the start of the project, we should, when I click the green flag, we should create multiple healthy people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a random location somewhere on the stage, and then I'm going to recreate a bunch of clones. So what a clone does is it basically copies the functionality or has the same code as the original, except I don't have to create multiple sprites to represent that. Um, let's use a loop. Let's use a repeat block to create multiple clones. So I'm going to bring over the repeat block. And what I want to do is I want to pick 10 random positions and drop a clone. So we want to create a clone after we go to a random position each time. So we can do a create a clone of myself inside of the repeat. So to test this out, when I hit the green flag, the original, my original sprite should create 10 clones. So there should be 11 dots, 11 blue dots on the stage when I run this. So I hit go and we have 11 dots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 must be somewhere else. Um, actually, let me try it again, because I think there should be 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Maybe not. Maybe there's just 10 clones and, um, and the original is there somewhere. Maybe, I'll, oh, you know what it is? I think the original is still on top of one of the clones. So one of these has two on top of it. But, uh, oh, there it is. Wow, that was a complete guess. It was this one. So now you see 11 dots. That was pretty lucky. <laughs> um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm not going to have the original dots on the stage. I'm just going to have all clones running around or moving around. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that my original person, they show up in the beginning, they create the clones, and then that original person hides. So let me go over to the looks palette and make sure that it shows in the beginning 
and then hides after it creates the 10 clones in random positions. Okay, so we have that much so far. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to start introducing motion. I want my clones to start moving around and walking around. So one thing I could do is use the when I start as a clone block. So let me find that in the events palette. Um, or maybe it's not events, it's in the control palette at the bottom. When I start as a clone, so all of these clones are going to have instructions to start moving around the stage kind of randomly. So I could do, I could have them choose a random location and glide to it. So we can glide like for one second to a random position. And just to test this out, I'm going to hit the green flag so you can see what this looks like. Each of the clones should start moving around randomly for one second. But they only do it once, and we want them to continually keep moving. So maybe I could put that inside of a forever block. So instead of just having it move for one second, I'm going to keep moving for one second all over the stage. So let me do that. And now these blocks are going to move around, some of them pretty fast, some of them a little slow. And what I want them to do is when they touch a six sprite, so when they either touch patient zero or when they touch themselves, but they touch a sick version of themselves, they should change to uh, the sick costume. So um, how are we gonna do that? Let's, let's think about this. The, the problem with this is that as they're gliding, I can't check something. I can't check to see if they're touching anything else because they're still in the glide. And what I mean by that is, if I were to put an if block inside of here, and let's say I can check to see if it's touching for now, let me just check to see if it's touching patient zero. So let me use the if touching patient zero, then switch costume. I want it to switch costume to sick. Perfect. So when they start as a clone, if they ever touch the sick dot or the sick patient zero, they should turn, they should change costumes to sick. But as you can see, some of them are crossing right over patient zero and they're not becoming sick. And the reason for that is because while it's gliding, so look, think about it like this. When, when it's going through this forever block, when it's gliding, it's not checking the conditional inside of it. It's doing the, the glide, and when it finishes the glide, then it checks the conditional. So that's not what we want. We want it to move a little bit, check. Move a little bit, check. Keep checking nonstop. Um, so I'm wondering if we could do this while we're gliding. Let me, let me actually try that. Let me see if we use another when I start as a clone block. So when I start as a clone, which is in the control palette towards the bottom, when I start as a clone, I want to continually check forever. So let me go back to events. I want to continually check to see if I'm touching patient zero. And whoa, that seems to work. Uh, I think some of them have started to become sick. I'm trying to see if, I'm trying to watch the uh, anything that crosses over or near patient zero and see if they're actually becoming sick. Um, might take a while because as, oh, no, I just saw one just go over it and it did not become sick. So I'm not sure why that is. Um, you know what? I have a different way. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna go about this a different way. I'm gonna solve this problem a little bit differently because I, I could see these blue dots are going right over patient zero, and not all of them are becoming sick. Um, so what I can do is instead of causing it to glide for a second and hoping that you know this works, I'm gonna move a little bit. I'm gonna move the sprite just a little bit, and then I'm gonna check to see if it's touching patient zero, or touching a sick sprite. Um, or a sick costume. So we're gonna just keep doing that over and over again. So I have to create this kind of like random motion. I know glide looks really nice, but because I can't get it working right now, I'm going to move by changing the X and Y position of the sprite. Um, so let's change X by a certain value and we'll change Y by a certain value. And because we don't really want it to move like crazy all over the board, we'll just change X maybe by something very small. So we'll have it go either left or right, maybe by two pixels. Um, and we'll do that randomly. So I don't have to choose like, you know, change X by one. Uh, we'll pick a random number. 
So we'll pick a random number from, let's say, negative 2 to positive 2. And we'll change the y by the same amount, um, just a random number up or down. So as soon as my sprites start as a clone, they should start moving around randomly. Uh, let's, um, let me remove this check. I don't need this over here. I am going to eventually bring this conditional statement underneath the movement. So it's going to move a little bit, check if it's touching. Move a little bit, check if it's touching. Move a little bit, check if it became infected. Um, so let's hit the green flag. And there we go. We have our sprites. They're moving around a little bit more like randomly. Um, actually looks like almost like Brownian motion over here. They kind of look uh, a little demented, um, but they are moving randomly uh, around the stage. So now what I can do, I think I can bring in this conditional underneath this and I can check to see if it's touching patient zero. And if it is touching patient zero, I could remove this glide because we're not going to use the glide to move around the stage, even though glide will have it look more like the, um, the video that, that I mentioned at the beginning. But let's test this out. Let's, uh, let's run this and I'll move patient zero around so that I know that it's, you know, it's more likely to touch um, one of these healthy sprites. And we'll see if it becomes sick. So it is, um, they're moving around, they're not touching. Let me just, uh, let me try to get them close. I, I think it's just a matter of time before like randomly one of them will, will touch it. And there we go. One of them did touch and became sick, became infected. The, the only problem with this though, is that if another one touches this like, this random, this sick block, this sick healthy person or formerly healthy, healthy person, they're not gonna become sick also. Cause we, we're not checking to see if, um, if, if we're touching patient zero or uh, a, a sick block or a, a sick costume, um, I don't think. We're about to find out up here at the top. Um, oh, they haven't touched yet. There we go. They, I, think, I think they came really close to touching and probably did touch, but, um, but they did not become, uh, it did not infect the healthy person. And as we can see, actually, the uh, patient zero, it's touched a few more blocks, a couple more blocks. Uh, not blocks, but sprites. So they're becoming infected, but they're not infecting other healthy sprites. Um, so let's let's go back to our healthy person and let's check to see if it's touching patient zero, or we could check to see if it's touching another sprite of the sick color, which is yellow. So I'm gonna do either or. We're gonna check to see if it's either touching patient zero or touching a color that means, that represents a sick sprite. So let's use the or block here. It's found in operators. And we're gonna check to see if we're touching patient zero or if we're touching the color yellow because yellow means sick. And if you're healthy and you touch a sick character, you become, or sick sprite, you become infected. So let's do touching color. And what we'll do is we'll select the exact color. We have to be very exact with this because if we use the wrong shade, it's not gonna work. So we're going to select the yellow color, and now my six sprites should be able to infect my other healthy sprites, even if they started as clones of a healthy sprite. So because right now it's going to take a little bit, of, it's going to take a while for some of these to touch the patient zero, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my loop, and instead of making 10, let's make 100 sprites, 100 healthy sprites at the start. And we're gonna have patient zero just standing there. Um, so I hit go. And now as it starts to populate the stage, as they touch, as they touch other healthy sprites, these new six sprites that are moving around, they should infect them. So we're waiting to see if we, uh, if we have contact and if we have an infection. Uh, and it seems to be working. They are, they're doing their job. They are infecting my healthy sprites. And I am sorry about my excitement here, but I'm happy that it's, uh, it seems to be working. <laughs> uh, the only issue I see is that patient zero isn't moving. So, um, so let's see, what could I do? I can bring over the, the random movement. It's going to be very similar to what I have here in person. Let me just duplicate this. I'm going to remove the if touching patient zero. We just need the motion. So I'm just going to drag this block and copy it over to patient zero. And now that I've done that, once we, uh, once we start, let me make sure that when I click the green flag, patient zero starts to move around randomly. And I actually wanna start patient zero at a random position. So I'm gonna to go to the motion block 
go to a random position, and then start moving around randomly and infecting my other healthy sprites. So that's what I want my patient's ear to do. Uh, as you can see, uh, the sprites are becoming diseased as they come in contact with other diseased sprites or infected sprites or patient zero. Patient zero is somewhere out there. Um, right now, patient zero isn't moving, but if I run this uh, project again, patient zero will move. Now, just because this is computer science and, you know, we are having a computer simulate this for us, instead of creating 100 sprites, why don't we try 200? Uh, I don't know if I don't know how much it'll slow down my computer, but let's just try it. Uh, we can see that patient zero, a sprite got cloned right on top of patient zero, and right now the infections at the top right. Uh, the, the sprites seem to be slowing down a little bit. Maybe the computer is bogging down just a bit, but uh, but before you know it, all of these sprites are going to become infected. Um, it's just a matter of time. So I hope this video was helpful at showing you one way to solve these problems and create this simulation. Um, it's up to you now, though, to take what I've shown you and enhance this project and make it more interesting. Maybe allow a user to select or choose how many people start off infected, or maybe have them like become non-infectious after a specific amount of time, or maybe show a counter of how many are infected and how many aren't. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do using a simulation like this, but I just wanted to show you how you could start doing it or start by creating it. Uh, I will see you in the next video. I hope this was uh, helpful. Mm -hmm.